is Cheyenne, and uh, my business is called Uziano. Uh, it's connection in Swahili. Uh, so I want to start by telling an African folktale that I read. It's about a man who's from a desert, and he's walking along the ocean, and he sees a fish. But since he's from the desert, he didn't know that the fish needed the water to live. So he picked up the fish and put it in his pocket. He started walking, and later he checked his pocket, and the fish was dead. And sometimes international aid looks a lot like that, right? We, organizations come in that don't really understand a problem, and they try to solve it. But consequently, they do more harm than good if they are making assumptions and not understanding everything that's happening in a culture or a community. So I've kind of outlined the way that international development usually works. Uh, countries from the global north take their own ideas and their own money and plant projects and ideas in developing countries of the global south. You can go to the next slide. So what I want our, what our approach would be is to take a community and empower and engage the ideas that the community members are having from the problems that the community members are experiencing. Sorry. Yep, sorry. <laughs> so the way that we plan to do this is by taking a small percentage of the budget of large international aid organizations and take that budget to employ people on the ground in the communities that these organizations were already serving. Do I need to slow down? Yes. Yes, slow down. Um, so then these employees that we would be hiring from the international aids budget would be collecting data and collecting ideas about what the communities see as problems and what the communities have ideas for to fix their own problems. And then they would send that data and the employees that we are hiring back to us and we would aggregate and analyze the data, put it on a report, and send it back to the international aid organizations. So really what the international aid organizations are doing is paying for data. Um, a lot of times in international aid, we make well-intentioned decisions, and Uziano allows these organizations to make well-informed decisions instead of intentioned. Uh, we call this data-driven human-based design. So in short, we collect community-based solutions from the community members, from community-based employees. So the employees that we'd be hiring are people who are invested in the future of these communities already. Um, and the first thing you learn in entrepreneurship is don't solve a problem you don't understand. But when we're solving problems for communities that we've never been to, that's really hard. So there's benefits for both the community that uh, Uziano is president and the uh, NGOs that they're, sent, they're um, serving. So some of the community benefits would be that the solutions are personal. It helps take away generalizations and assumptions that are really easy to make when you don't understand a problem. Uh, the solutions are empowering, mostly because they're solutions that the community members have thought of. And jobs are created, so we won't um, pay money to fly people in to collect data or understand a problem. We'll just communicate with people already on the ground. Um, and the NGO benefits is they're making data-driven decisions instead of well-intentioned decisions. Um, financial aid is no longer wasted, so we break this down um, for aid in Kenya later on. And uh, we would only need 0.03% of their entire budget for USAID in Kenya to employ, employ 54 people on a 10000 a year salary, USD. And that's part time. Uh, and so at, once we scale, uh, Uziano could be like a stamp of approval for an NGO. Like they went through Uziano, their data's legit. So we should use this company or donate to this company. Yeah, next one. Okay, so uh, this is for uh, uh, this. It comes from USAID. So this is all of the money that goes into Africa on an annual basis, 162 billion. So if you take 0.3% of that, you get 500,000 or 50,000 dollar salaries for 10,000 employees, uh, which would be impacting 10,000 communities. Um, so I have some more data uh, past these slides. So hopefully that'll help me answer questions. And uh, if you have feedback, I'd love feedback too. And then you it. All right. <laughs> this is a, a new approach in international development. Do you have a place where you want to implement it first? Or? 
Um, so my initial thought was to work mostly with public, like uh, United Nations, World Food Program, USAID. But the more I started working with it, I think that private companies would actually be a really good place to start so they can sidestep uh, large domestic governments and go straight to local. Um, right now, one of the companies I'm working with is Cargill. Are you familiar with Cargill? It's a really large ag co uh, cooperation in the U.S. and uh, a lot of the global north countries. Um, and they are working on a poultry project in different African countries. So I'm, collect I'm working to collect data for them to show them a trial of what I could collect. And I think that private sector might be better. Um, long term, I think organizations like the United Nations might be an option too.